Hello, and welcome back to Sketch of the Day. Today we're going to keep on practicing our two-point perspective sketches, and we'll have sort of a creative angle to this one like we did last time. So just follow along with me at the beginning, and then second half will be up to you. So for my first line, I'm going to place my vertical line. I'm going to cheat it a little bit over to the left side of the page, and I'm still going to try to keep that more, <clears throat> more up near the horizon line versus the bottom of my page. So from there, I can go back towards my depth direction. And I can go back towards my width direction. Keeping my lines very light, construction lines. Um, on my left facing surface of the object, I want to uh, put another vertical line in there that makes this look about the proportions of a square on this end. Um, and then from that point, I'm also going to be going back towards my depth line. <clears throat> so I have about a square shape off here on the left facing side. On the front facing side here, I want to go about three times that distance. So this is a visual estimate here, but I'm just going to say that ends right about there. And from that corner, I can come back in the width direction until I meet the other line. So now, Let's add height lines that divide this front facing section up into approximately thirds. Now, trying to measure this out and space these out in equal thirds is not going to work because in perspective sketches, um, the closer the object is to us, the bigger it appears to be. So my square here that is closest to me is a little bigger than the one next to it and a little bigger than the one next to that. So even though visually they might look like they are all about the same size, um, it's an optical illusion because this one appears to be farther away from us. And from those points, I'm going to also fill in some construction lines in the width direction. <clears throat> so our practice exercise today is to turn this construction line box that we've created into a sofa. And before we do this, I want you to think about every sofa you've ever seen. What makes them different? Some have feet, some don't. Some have big puffy cushions on the back, some don't. Some have three places for you to sit, some have two. Some have different shaped armrests. Some are rounded in places, others are straight. The textures and materials are different. There's infinite different ways that you could design a sofa. I want to see your creation, your design, using basically this general rough outline. Construct your sofa design in two-point perspective. Now I think for mine, I want to have the bottom of my sofa be a little bit smaller and then flare up, angle up to a full-size top. So to do that, I need, uh, I need a smaller rectangle here at my base. What I'm going to do is fill in the missing edges of my bottom rectangle, edges we wouldn't normally see. And from there, I'm going to step in a little bit. So using this bottom edge that we've already found, I'm going to come in a little from there. I'm going to draw a new edge. Same thing on the front side. I'm going to come in a little bit, still following my perspective rules. And now, I have new corners to connect with my top edge. <clears throat> Back edge over there. Um, I'm going to hold off on this one over here because I'm not sure yet where I want that to connect to. Now, I want my backrest to be the full height of the box that I've created. But I want my armrest to be a little lower than that. So I'm going to fill in my backrest first, and 
am continuing with my same angle that I used here on the side. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. That point looks good to me. From there, I'm gonna take this forward. That's gonna be my armrest. I don't think that this front edge should be quite vertical like that. I wanna have it slope out a little bit more so that it's more like the back edge that angles out. That looks better to me. Now I can give the armrest some thickness and I'm going to carry this line actually all the way through the sofa because it's going to help me to position my back, my, my other armrest here as well. Um, but I'm going to darken up this short segment here closest to me and I'm going to use that point to bring the armrest forward. So again, as you are creating your sofa design, you can do anything you want to do, except for mine. I don't want to see how well you can draw my sofa. I want to see what you can come up with on your own. Okay, so for my armrest, I can connect my other side of the backrest with the armrest and I can bring my armrest forward. This is gonna be on a normal width line, normal perspective width line. Now I have a pretty good idea where the other edge of my sofa should start and end so I can connect these two dots to get that angle. I'm starting to notice lots of construction lines that are going to become a little confusing, so now seems like a good time to remove some. And I also have some lines that I can darken up. gonna need some cushions on my sofa so from the point where my armrest ends here I'm gonna come down just a little bit and from there I'm gonna draw a depth line over to mark the back of my seat cushions and from this point where my armrest starts to level off again and go towards the other side of the sofa. I need a little height line, and I'm going to bring my back edge of my sofa cushions forward until I hit that height line. The corner that they make is where I want to draw my depth line, marking the front top edge, front top edge of my cushions. have some more construction lines to erase. Now the lines that I had on here in the beginning, construction lines dividing this into thirds, give me approximately the right uh, spacing for my sofa cushions, if I want to have three cushions. I'm making some little adjustments to account for the thickness of the armrest that I came in on both sides. But um, I generally like the way this looks with three cushions, so I just use my perspective lines, vertical width and depth. And I'm going to fill in those sofa cushions. I don't really want my seat back to seem so vertical, so I'm going to tilt this back a little bit. And now I'm going to add some shading. This time I'm going to have my light source positioned more towards the front 
Um, so my front facing surfaces are gonna get the brightest light. Um, my top facing surfaces are gonna get sort of medium style shading. And my uh, left side facing surfaces over here are going to get it the darkest. Now just for practice, let's throw down some ground shadows that look about the way our uh, sofa shadows would look. So I'm gonna make my first one extending off of this front edge here that would be casting part of this cushion into shadow. And using the same angles here, I'm going to also throw a shadow onto the ground. And I'm pretty happy with my little sofa. Of course, your sofa is going to look different than mine does, as long as you're practicing your two-point perspective skills, practicing shading, practicing shadows, then um, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and getting what you should be getting from this exercise. This is how Every sofa that's ever been designed has been born. Somebody had an idea for how to make their sofa, how to change the design from what they knew into something different, something new. Um, that's generally how products come to reality. It starts off as an idea in somebody's head. The next step is it turns into a sketch on paper. And once they get that sketch uh, looking looking good to their satisfaction, then they start to get real specific about the details. How is it going to be manufactured? How is it going to be built? Um, what kinds of fabric and what patterns and colors and textures are going to be used on this? Um, it's, it's just one piece of the larger process of designing a product. So with this skill, you can take your ideas from your head and you can put them on paper for other people to understand too. Sign it and date it and your sketch of the day is complete.